In today's video we are looking at the Leica LMR 9cm f4. Hello Matt here, hope you guys are all well. I've got another vintage lens for you today. This as far as I know is the second cheapest Leica lens you can buy. I think the cheapest Leica lens is the Leica 135mm f4 lens which I've already covered. So today we have the second cheapest. As I say, this is the Leica Elmar 9cm or 90mm f4 lens. And for display purposes, I've got it mounted on a Leica 3G camera. So here I have it mounted on a Leica 3G, which is a obviously a Barnack Leica for those of you that know your Barnack Leicas. And then on the top, I've got a 90mm parallax corrected viewfinder. I'll talk about that a bit more in a second. So what's kind of tell you about this amazing vintage Leica lens? The earliest version of this lens date back to 1933, the kind of the time of the early Barnack Leicas, hence I've got a Barnack Leica out to show you today. This particular lens dates back to 1955. This is a Leica thread mount lens, hence it fits on the early Leica thread mount cameras. Like release both a screw mount lens as I have here and also an M mount lens. So I also have my M240 to hand. If you shoot with like M cameras, you may want to get the M mount version of this lens. In addition to having M mount and LTM mount, there is also rigid, which is this one, meaning non collapsible, and then there's also collapsible. The earliest lenses from 1933 are all rigid, not this particular lens design. And then in the mid 1950s, they released a collapsible version of this lens. I'll bring up a photo to show you. The 90mm f4 lens is a four elements in three groups optical design. So it has an aperture scale of f4 to f32. And perhaps strangely, it has the aperture scale on both sides of the lens. So you don't see that on modern lenses. I'm a bit cack handed trying to show you <laughs> and block the camera so it focuses. My particular copy of this lens has a clickless aperture, so perhaps good for video for anybody liking to use vintage lenses for video. The lens has a close focus distance of one meter going through to infinity, and the lens extends as you focus to infinity. In terms of filter size, you may notice that this lens has a very small front element, smaller than even the 39mm common like a filter thread. This lens actually takes a 36mm push-on filter. Now what's quite nice is, let me show you, this is obviously the 90mm like Elmar, but for any of you that have watched my other videos, you'll know that I also use a, excuse the noises, 50mm like Elmar. So 50mm like Elmar collapsible, 90mm like Elmar non-collapsible. Obviously I could get the collapsible version of this and then they'd both be collapsible. The great advantage if you use say a Leica 3 camera and the 50mm and the 90mm is say a pair of lenses. The filter size of the 50mm LMR is the same as the filter size of the 90mm LMR. So for demonstration purposes here is my push on 36A or A36 filter from my 50mm lens. And there you can see the same filter fits on the, the 90mm. And there's the filter on the 50. So it's really nice, you can buy one filter and use it on both lenses. Now this is also nice, if you saw my Leica Summeron 35F 3.5 video, I said that you can use the hood from the 50mm Elmar on the 35mm Summeron. I've also found that you can use the 50mm Elmar hood on the 90mm Elmar. So now that's really useful. So. I'll just attach it so it doesn't fall off. So there you can see the 50mm hood, the A36 push-on filter on the 90mm lens, and both of these are then transferable onto the 50 or the 90. Now Leica also made larger hoods. This is a hood which came with the 90mm lens, but I find it quite weighty. Um, and although I've used this since buying the lens, now I know that the 50mm Elmar hood will fit. This is so much lighter and I think so much nicer looking as well. Uh, if I just attach it without the filter. These are called clamp-on hoods so they have a screw on the side just to make sure it's secure. 
and from now on I'm going to probably use the this hood on this lens. In terms of weight I believe this is an aluminium lens and because of that it's a nice lightweight lens. This lens weighs 194 grams which is 6.4 ounces. If I just show you again in terms of dimensions it's quite a long lens but it's a very thin lens so it's quite easy to kind of pack next to your camera if you have a very compact camera bag. You can see the thickness of the Leica 3G there and there's the thickness of the lens so in terms of stacking it in a bag it is very compact. Now for any of you that know your Leica 3 cameras you may be saying to yourself why has Matt got a 90mm viewfinder on the top of his Leica 3G when the Leica 3G is the only Barnack Leica with a built-in 90mm frame line. This was a test to see who was watching. So this is correct. So if you look through the viewfinder the Leica 3G is the only Barnack Leica to have frame lines for the 90mm lens. This makes this the perfect Barnack Leica if you enjoy shooting 90mm lenses. Don't blame me if this is another excuse to buy another Barnack Leica and say you shoot with the Leica 3F or Leica 2F like the 2F that I have. The 3G is great if you want to use a 90mm but if you do have say like a 3F for example often when you buy a 90mm lens you get the Leica 90mm finder with the lens. So this means you can have your 3F with the 90mm finder on the top and then it's just the same as on any other camera where you're going to focus with your built-in viewfinder, transfer your eye from the rangefinder to the viewfinder, compose your shot, take your photo. This viewfinder is ridiculously bright. It's one of the nicest viewfinders I've ever looked through. I've got quite a few viewfinders from the likes of Voigtlander, Canon, uh, Leica, and I have to say, I've not looked through this viewfinder much, but it actually looks better than real life, which is kind of ridiculous. This 90mm finder is special because it's parallax corrected. So I can get it to focus. The reason I wanted to make sure I bought this viewfinder is, is because before you take your photo you dial in the distance to your subject on the top of the viewfinder or on the viewfinder should I say. So you match the distance here with the distance set on your lens and that's going to tilt the viewfinder to give you the correct composition. The problem I found with the earlier Leica 3 cameras, say my Leica 2F, if I use a standard cheap 90mm viewfinder and then I shoot my portraits at one meter. I can bring up an example that I've shared before of parallax error, but basically I was taking a portrait like this, assuming the portrait was here, as shown through the in-camera viewfinder, when in actual fact the, view, the portrait was, say, here. For that reason, I kind of missed half their head. With a longer lens, it's much more important to have a parallax-corrected viewfinder than, say, with a 50mm or wide lens, especially if, like me, you shoot at one meter because you really are moving your frame from here to here, for example. So I do recommend using a parallax corrected viewfinder if you are going to shoot 90 mm lenses up close with your subjects. If you shoot an infinity, it doesn't matter. I've not counted how many aperture blades this lens has got, but looking in the lens itself, it's a lot. <laughs> uh, more than most of my other lenses. The advantage of this is you're going to get round bokeh balls at almost every aperture. Uh, so yeah, it's quite a beautiful lens looking in it like this. I tend not to spend my life looking eyeballing into all my lenses, so I've never really noticed that before. Uh, but yeah, very beautiful. Um, what I was looking at is the front of the lens. I was trying to see if there's a tint on the lens itself to understand if it's a single coated lens or a non coated lens. I don't believe a lens of the 1950s multi coated. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it, but it, to my eyes it looks like there's a slight blue tint on the front of this lens. The reason I bring this up is if we now talk about the look of this lens, this lens will flare in bright conditions so I would recommend always using a lens hood. I have read reports where people say the lens doesn't flare but if like me you like shooting in bright conditions and kind of at all close to the sun you're much better off to as I think of it, give the lens a chance and kind of get better results by shielding the front lens element from the sun. Here is a photo with the lens hood off and you can see the kind of the veiling flare and kind of the low contrast. And here is the same photo or similar photo with the hood on and you can see much higher contrast. So for that reason I would use the lens with the hood on 
as much as possible in bright conditions. Obviously, if the sun's behind you, it's not a problem, but if you're shooting towards the sun, you better use a hood. Um, I also tried shooting directly at the sun to see how the lens would uh, cope. And you can see here, you don't really get sun stars as such, and it's kind of a spray of light into the lens, but no kind of flare balls kind of going across the photo like we saw in the video yesterday with the USAR 20mm f5.6 lens. So in terms of contrast, because of the age of the lens and because of the lens coating, I would say the contrast is say medium to good. It's not a high contrast lens, but it's also not a low contrast lens. So I think it's like a, a nice level of contrast lens. Being an f4 lens, I find this lens more than sharp enough at f4 for my portraits. And it really does give you quite nice detail. I'll share some bokeh photos, both to show what the bokeh looks like, but also the sharpness. And you can see the detail on the, on the front of the roller cord camera, which I was using as a, a model. <laughs> and I think both the bokeh looks absolutely beautiful, but also the detail captured at or very close to wide open is also pretty spectacular for such a cheap and old lens. So well done, like engineers. Absolutely fantastic job with this lens, I think. I did a white wall test for you to see what the vignetting looked like and there is a very slight fall off at f4 and then with every lens the more you suck the lens down the vignetting is going to go away. As you know I tend not to shoot colour but I did shoot this photo in bokeh in colour just to get an idea of how it looked and I really like the kind of the natural tones and I think it has a slight blue cast. This was shot at the end of the day so it may be more blue than normal because it was kind of almost blue hour so everything looked a little bit more blue. I think the colour is really beautiful and very nicely rendered so I wouldn't hesitate to use this lens again to shoot colour if I get an urge to shoot perhaps some colour film for example. It's worth stating the obvious you can also use this lens on film cameras that being screw mount cameras such as the the Barnett cameras as shown here. It can be on say a screw mount camera such as the Voigtlander Besser R it can be on like M cameras via a Leica M adapter, such as the Leica M3 would be particularly good because you have the higher magnification viewfinder rangefinder. So for my mind, that's the best of the Leica M cameras, film cameras to use with this lens. Then obviously digital Leica M cameras, such as my M240. The photos in this video were shot as JPEG with either the Leica M240 or the crop sensor Leica CL. So remember the Leica CL is giving you even more reach because the Leica CL is a crop sensor Leica. For those of you who are Leica CL shooters, in terms of the digital Leica CL shooters, you may like this lens because it is a very lightweight lens so it doesn't feel overly front heavy. And if you want kind of a short telephoto with the crop it will give you a slightly longer telephoto. Yeah, it's a very nice lens. And then obviously as a portrait photographer, this lens is also excellent for portraits. It's nice for both headshots. I've seen in a couple of these images here. These are all shot wide open on digital cameras, like a M240. And then also for half body portraits, but you need to have a large enough studio to be able to back up enough to get half body or even full body, perhaps better outside if you want full body, unless you're lucky enough to have a massive studio. <laughs> Um, so yeah, really nice compression and longer lenses tend to be more favourable for headshots because they flatten, for those of you that don't know, long lenses flatten your profile. So if you've got a big nose like this, when you shoot it with a long lens, it flattens it. Whereas if you, that's why people use, say, the 200mm DSLR lenses, for example, because 200mm is what fashion photographers often used in the past to compress the, the features of a model. Personally, I really like 50mm lenses as a balance between some features and some kind of 3D look in terms of noses come out towards the photo. The 90 will compress more than a 50. So if I'm shooting with a model and she thinks her nose looks too big, I'll switch out from a 50, for example, to a 90. If I'm using a 28 at the time, <laughs> perhaps I'll start using a 50. And then if she still doesn't like it, then I'll use a 90. Equally, if someone has quite a flat face kind of um, genetics, Sometimes I find longer lenses can make a face too flat, so then I'd swap out and go for a wider lens, maybe a 50 or a 35. Slightly off topic, but that's why you'd use a long lens versus a normal lens, normal being a 50mm lens, if you're into your portraiture 
obviously for landscape photography the longer the lens the more compression you can get in a scene so i'm actually really looking forward to using this lens for say travel where i sometimes appreciate longer lenses more than normal lenses if you like the idea of a 90 mm lens but 90 mm f4 doesn't really sound your thing you may want to check out my Leica Summicron 90mm f2 video. That is amazing for portraits, that lens. That's a Leica M-mount lens. You could check out the Leica Thambar 90mm f2.2 video if you've got plenty of money to spare. That is like a soft look remake of an old lens. And then equally, if you want to get closer than one meter, check out my Leica Macro Elmar 90mm f4 lens. That's also a 90mm f4, but it's a modern 90mm f4 and it collapses to roughly the same size as this 50 3.5 Elmar. R maybe slightly longer, but not by much. It's ridiculously small and it is so, so sharp. It is my sharpest lens I own for the whole Leica system and maybe of any lens I own. That's the Macro Elmar 90mm. It is a, a lot, lot more expensive than this lens, so you might prefer this lens. <laughs> But again, if money is no object to you and you want the best of the best, I recommend looking at the Macro Elmar, not the, the Vintage Elmar. Or maybe you want both. The Vintage Elmar will give you a more vintage look because there's lower contrast. The Macro Elmar will give you near perfection because it's a more modern lens. So finally, how much does this lens cost, I hear you ask? So I said at the beginning of the video, I believe this is the second cheapest Leica lens you can buy. The cost of this lens has, I think, doubled in the last maybe two years. But as at April 2021, the average price in the UK is around £200 GBP. You can get them for less than 100 but I'd say for a nice copy, maybe around £200. And in the US, around $200. As I say, the price range is quite broad, depending on which model you get. There are earlier versions, there are later versions. There are also other 90 mils available when you search for like a 90 mil you'll find quite a few different versions. This is one of the cheapest ones of the ones available, being a simple design and one of the older ones. That's all I have for you today. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button and do let me know in the comments below if you shoot with a 90mm lens. Are you, do you shoot with a 90 f4? Do you shoot with the 2.8? Do you shoot with the f2? There are quite a few different versions and I think and different people have their own kind of favourites. For me, the F2 is fantastic for portraits, but I am a sucker for light, small lenses. So the, the F4, as shown in this video, I think offers maybe the best bang for the buck for any of the 90mm lenses available on eBay. Finally, if you're not yet subscribed, feel free to subscribe. And as always, a big thank you to my patrons. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.